Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. It's Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell. Glad to have you along today. The South Carolina Gamecocks are bowl-bound here in 2016. And we're going to talk about the Birmingham Bowl that's set for a 2 o'clock kickoff on Thursday, December the 29th. It'll be at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Wes, great for this Gamecock ball club to be making a bowl trip. South Carolina picked to finish dead last in the SEC East and at the bottom of the SEC overall. So six wins. I think you know a lot of people didn't think that was going to happen this year, Wes, but Will Muschamp has got the Gamecocks into a bowl game and a chance to kind of put some of the bad memories from the Clemson game behind this football team and turn their attention to next year. So, bowl trip, much anticipated and much looked forward to, Wes. Yeah, I think if you're South Carolina, Emerson, you sort of just have to embrace this game. I know that, you know, the South Carolina fan base is, uh, I would say, a little bit um, sort of still maybe trying, maybe still actually trying to warm up from how cold the uh, last trip to Birmingham was, you know, uh, literally still trying to thaw out uh, from that trip. But, uh, you know, I know this isn't a game that South Carolina fans traditionally would, would get very excited about. But I think when you look at last year, you look at three wins, you look at a loss to the Citadel, and you look at this year, you look at six wins, you look at a win over Tennessee, you know, uh, improvement in SEC play, uh, a young sort of base of talent that South Carolina now has in place, and a defense that improved in um, quite literally every single meaningful defensive uh, statistical category, then I I think you have to sort of look at this uh, game as something you have to embrace as a stepping stone. It's certainly not where South Carolina wants to be ultimately. It's certainly not where Muschamp plans to be next year. But um, as far as getting this program headed in the right direction, this is a very real uh, step, especially something, I mean, we, we've talked about it all season long, ever since the ability to get 15 extra practices yep. for these young players and, uh, you know, a chance for for these older guys to, to at least go out on a possible po- positive memory. I mean, you know, the interesting thing about this program, Emerson, is that traditionally, um, you know, how how long was it before South Carolina won its first bowl game? Um, you know, there was a time when bowl games were uh, sort of not nec- – were like a, a huge deal just to get to bowl eligibility. Now, you know, as I wrote in the middle of this season, uh, going becoming bowl eligibility – eligible has actually become uh, something that is almost uh, just assumed, uh, you know, since Steve Spurrier took over. So the modern tradition is for South Carolina to be bowl eligible and to get to a bowl game. So, you know, I I think this is a big deal just because it starts the must-champ era with a bowl game, a chance to finish above 500. And, you know, just a, a, a chance to, to start things on, on a positive, uh, you know, standpoint. And even if South Florida wins, because I think it's a, it's a tough matchup for South Carolina, but even if South Florida wins, you cannot downplay the importance of getting these extra practice. Right. The extra month of practice time is what's critical here to such a young Gamecock football team. South Carolina's playing so many sophomores and freshmen, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. So a chance to get 15 additional practices is invaluable right now as we consider you know preparation and moving into next year so that's huge for South Carolina and maybe Will Muschamp has laid the foundation here in his first year for the Gamecocks to get back in the hunt in the SEC East. Wes let's talk about the opponent here typically when you're six and six you're going to a bowl game you figure you may get another six and six team in your bowl or maybe a seven and five team but not for the Gamecocks in this year's Birmingham Bowl it'll be the South Florida Bulls a team that is 10 and two that's a school record the Bulls play in the AAC and their only two losses this year came against Florida State. They scored 35 points in that loss to FSU. And then they lost to Temple West. It cost them a chance to play for the AAC Championship. But this is an outstanding South Florida team that is very high-powered offensively. They're averaging almost 44 points a ball game. In fact, West, nobody's held them under 30 all year. And they are high-powered, and they're an 11-point favorite against the Gamecocks in the Birmingham Bowl. Yeah, you know, and uh, lost to a Temple team that, you know, just beat Navy this past weekend. And uh, you know, this is a this is a good South Florida football team, and this is a great South Florida offense. Uh, you know, Quentin Flowers is a guy that's very very elusive in the open field, can make teams miss. Um, you know, that should be a problem for South Carolina. Um, you know, I look at South Carolina's 
defense and you know while they've been able to hold most teams they've you know they've faced down to at least keep keep them in the game you know I see a defense that still very much needs to upgrade its overall athleticism and its overall speed so you put a guy like uh, Quentin Flowers at quarterback and he's gonna give South Carolina problems so you know I, I see another high scoring football game you know a quick glance at South Florida's defense, and you'll see that they have had some struggles top, stopping other teams. Um, you know, I believe they're they're last in their conference in total defense, and they've actually given up a bunch of yards on the ground too, which uh, tends to mean that you know, obviously, you're not getting great play up front either from your front four or your front seven. So, I, you know, I tend to when I look at South Carolina and I look at a matchup and how South Carolina is going to fare, I tend to look at the line play you know but because South Carolina has has had some skill guys step up and had Jake Mintley step up had Rico Daddle step up you know I think they match up with most teams as far as that goes but um you know the games that they've just really struggled obviously Florida Clemson um they were completely controlled up front um to me South Florida may be a team that South Carolina's offensive line can uh you know can hold us on against so I actually think a high-scoring game, um, you know, when you look at how good South Florida is, I wouldn't be surprised, Emerson, if that line did jump even higher when you look at uh, their success this year. They're a high-power offense, and and people are going to have fresh in their mind what Clemson just did to South Carolina. Uh, You know, I've already noticed on our message board a lot of fans who don't have much uh, belief in South Carolina to win this game. I understand that, but um, this is not Clemson either, and this is certainly not Clemson's defense. This is certainly not Clemson's defensive front, which just uh, completely manhandled South Carolina. So um, I'm sure the people listening just love to be reminded of that again. But um, as far as the matchup goes, um, you know, you got you got to sort of remember, I think, that your offense and your defense are always married to each other. So, you know, it's, it's very easy to get blown out by a team like Clemson when they're clicking on offense and your offense, being South Carolina, is going three and out. Um, you know, things start to even out if both offenses are moving the football and having success. So, you know, I, my early impression is that this is going to be a high-scoring game and, uh, you know, if South Carolina executes on offense, which I think they can against this team, I actually think that, you know, this is this could actually be a pretty entertaining game. Yeah, it could be high scoring, no question about it. South Florida averaging forty three and a half points a ball game, and West they seem to be playing their best football of the year at the end of the season. They lost to Temple on October the twenty first. Temple beat uh, South Florida forty six to thirty, and you mentioned that Temple just beat Navy this past weekend for the AAC championship. But since that loss to Temple, South Florida beat nineteenth ranked Navy. They scored on the first six possessions of the ball game to beat Navy fifty two forty five. They won at Memphis. They won at SMU. SMU beat Houston earlier this year, and then they closed the season with a 48-31 to win over their arch rival Central Florida. And in those four games, Wes, Quentin Flowers, the junior quarterback for the South Florida Bulls, ran for over 100 yards in each of those games. In fact, he ran for over a buck 40 in all four of South Florida's final four games of the year. So dual threat quarterback, you better believe it, Quentin Flowers, the junior for South Florida, six foot, 210 pounds, passed for over 2,000 yards this year and ran for over 1,000. He's got a single season school record for rushing touchdowns with 13, single game total offense record for South Florida with 473 yards, and he's currently 10th in the nation in total offense at 331 yards per ball game. So Coach Muschamp talked about him in the press conference on Sunday, said that he recruited Quentin Flowers, he knows a lot about him, and the kid is really good football player maybe the best in south florida history yeah he, he's a stud man I, and i would dare say um whichever team you know be it south florida quarterback Quint flowers or south carolina running back rico daddle wh- whichever of those guys has the the best rushing day uh, may be a may sort of correlate with who wins this game i think because uh you know we, we've seen when south carolina's offense has been pretty good uh daddle you know, as much as Jake Bentley has been a big part of, of them being bowl eligible, um, Daddle having room to, to operate and able to get some yards has sort of been, to me, the biggest indicator of South Carolina's offensive success. So, 
Uh, you know, they're clearly they're, they'll clearly have trouble with Flowers. I, I think we know enough about this team at this point to know that Flowers is going to give them some trouble. But um, you know, with guys like this, it's just always about limiting them. Um, you know, 85 yards rushing and a touchdown, as opposed to you know a buck 40 and three touchdowns. Um, you know, 85 yards is still a good day for that kid, but. Uh, you know, it's limited based on what his upside and potential is. So I think that's the that's the thing South Carolina will have to do. Um, just if you, you sort of glance at this thing early on, you're, you're going to say just find a way to limit him is going to be a huge, huge key for this team and for this game. So, um, you know, th- this is a South Florida team that I, I, I think, you know, we'll have to continue to research and learn more about. You know, you obviously hear about Flowers. I don't yet know much about some of their other uh, – other name guys other than just the fact that this is an offense that has continuously put up points um, clearly has some uh, w- without even looking I imagine there, there there's a bunch of upperclassmen on this offense just because they've been so consistently good and uh, and Willie Taggart has done a great job of it as well you know to, to sort of uh, switch gears a little bit Emerson the other intriguing thing about this game is that Taggart's name is now uh, sort of officially out there uh, linked with some other jobs. Yeah, Oregon is the main one right now that Taggart's being mentioned in connection with. He's in his fourth year at South Florida. They have not won a bowl game under Coach Taggart, but they won seven of their last eight games last year. They lost to Western Kentucky in the Miami Beach Bowl last year, 45-35, to but they come back with a 10-2 and campaign here in 2016. That's a school record for most wins in a single season, and they're flying high into this bowl matchup. The Birmingham Bowl, 2 o'clock kickoff, Thursday, December the 29th. It'll be on ESPN. Gamecock Central Radio here, Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell. We hope you'll download the Gamecock Central phone app. We've got a GCR phone app that's available on the App Store and on Google Play. Real simple. You download the app. You listen to our podcast on your cell phone. Two clicks and you're listening to our podcast here on Gamecock Central Radio. You can subscribe to our free podcast. Search for Gamecock Central Radio on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services or just visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. Wes, uh, Flowers was injured. Uh, injured his hamstring in the fourth quarter that lost to Temple. Temple ran for 319 yards in that 16-point win over South Florida. So Flowers got knocked out out of that game. He did not return, but South Florida came back the following week and upset 19th ranked Navy, and they've won four straight coming into this Birmingham Bowl game. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, Willie Taggart here. Taggart got a call from Ray Tanner last year. Wes, after Steve Spurrier retired in the middle of the season last year, and the Gamecocks started their coaching search, one of the people he talked to was Willie Taggart, the head coach at South Florida. Yeah, you know, um, obviously it it never got past Will Muschamp. I, I think Tom Herman, obviously, and Kirby Smart were the other two names you heard the most, but uh, Taggart did um, get an interview from Ray Tanner and, you know, listen to what Ray Tanner had to say last night, uh, Sunday, for the bowl press conference. Um, you know, Taggart's a guy that he's got a tremendous amount of respect for, and you, you have to respect what he's done at South Florida. And obviously, if Oregon is taking a look at you, then there's clearly a, uh, you know, a, a reason for that. So uh, the guy can no doubt coach, and, you know, you've got these other openings around the country that, um, you know, it just makes sense for, for Oregon to, to take a look at him. So I'm, I'll be curious to see if that has any effect at, at all on this game. And, you know, certainly uh, teams, um, you know, if they hire a head coach away from somewhere, they're going to want the, the coach to start right away. So, uh, you know, that could have an effect on this game. But, um, you know, we'll see if Oregon goes that direction. I, I think, um, you know, P.J. Fleck um, is another guy that's been mentioned uh, for the Oregon uh, spot. Uh Lane Kiffin been mentioned a little bit, although I guess it looks like huh. um, it looks like Lane Kiffin to Houston may be a real possibility. So interesting, um, you know the uh, the coaching carousel has uh, has has started to sort of turn, and we'll see if that has any effect on yep. uh, on this game for yep. South Carolina. Helfrich is out at uh, Oregon, and Willie Taggart, one of the names, is being mentioned as one of the leading candidates for that job. And Wes, I was just reading before we started our podcast today that if Taggart goes to Oregon. South Florida may go after Lane Kiffin. So that's another story to keep an eye on. And the coaching carousel goes round and round. Wes, another interesting connection, I think it's worth pointing out, that Taggart replaced former South Carolina assistant Skip Holtz at South Florida. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Skip now uh, doing well again, I believe, at uh, Louisiana Tech, yep, right? Yep. So I actually thought Skip would, would have been more successful, uh, you know, than, than he was um, at, at South Florida. But Taggart's done a good job. And, uh, you know, ironically, uh, you know, Taggart's being mentioned for the Oregon head job, and uh, Scott Frost, 
was the Oregon OC that left Oregon to go down to Central Florida. You know, of course, South Florida's a rival. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you uh, there's some sort of just put so many connections in the coaching world as far as, uh, you know, guys uh, being linked to each other. And, you know, I, I, I think from what Muschamp was saying Sunday, no real direct ties between uh, between Taggart and, and Muschamp, but uh, Coleman Hutzler, uh, South Con special teams coordinator and uh, and linebackers coach, actually has worked with Taggart before. So uh, some sort of, um, I guess what would the word be, tangential um, connections there between yep. – uh, South Carolina and Willie Taggart, and of course, like you said, Ray Tanner, uh, interviewing him uh, last year for the vacant uh, head, head coach job at South Carolina. South Florida's last bowl win came in 2010, and they beat Clemson at the Meineke Car Care Bowl that was in Charlotte. It's now, I believe it's now the Belt Bowl, but back then it was the Meineke Car Care Bowl, and South Florida beat Clemson 31-26. Skip Holtz was the head coach at South Florida at that time, and he's since been replaced by Willie Taggart, now in his fourth year as the head coach of the Bulls. And Wes, I was looking at the South Florida roster before we started today, and I counted just eight players who are from outside of the state of Florida. Their entire roster is made up of Florida kids, and we hear all the time about how good the high school football talent is in the state of Florida, and South Florida rarely goes outside the state to find talent. Yeah, you know, that makes sense for them, and I, I think you you have to commend them for being able to land those guys, because South Florida and Central Florida have not always been able to do that, because um, you know, the, the the thought process may be, well, obviously Florida, Florida State, Miami can't take all those guys, but, um, I mean, as well known as the talent is in Florida, you have ev- everybody else trying to come into Florida. And, and take those guys from you. Then you, you have, uh, you know, Ohio State and Michigan coming in from the Big Ten trying to, you know, use their connections there at mine, Florida. Uh, the other SEC programs mine in Florida. Uh, Clemson does a good job in Florida. So it's really not as simple to say, well, the guys that Florida and, you know, Miami, Florida State can't take can, will just go to South Florida. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's really not been the case. So I, I think it says a lot about this coaching staff that they've been able to, to get guys from Florida that have clearly uh, performed well, because you know if you're if you're getting the the next level of guys after Miami, Florida, Florida State, you're getting some great players. But if you're getting the you know the eighth, tenth level of guys after the rest of the SEC, and then Urban Meyer and all those guys have come in too, then you know maybe you're not uh, you're not filling you know filling your roster with as much talent as you want. Everybody going after talent in the state of Florida, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, the North Carolina schools, everybody works Florida trying to get uh, all that talent that comes out of that talent-rich state. So, Wes, a good discussion today, and we're going to talk more about this bowl game when we return here on Gamecock Central Radio. Good discussion today, Wes. We appreciate your time. Sounds good, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, that's Wes Mitchell, and I'm Emerson Phillips. Thanks for joining us here on Gamecock Central Radio. 